Robert Moffet called Moshet of the Betuanas in South Central Africa, where he did his best work, was an amazing man who taught the story of Christ to many people. When he was born December 21st, 1995, no one could have guessed that one day he would be reverenced by the kings of Africa and the Parliament of Great Britain. His parents had raised him as a good Christian, but at 11 years old, he ran away to become a sailor. Three years later, to his parents' relief, he returns as a wiser young man. In search for better work, Robert moves away from his home in Scotland to England. In England, he had become acquainted with the Methodists who gave him the idea to offer himself as a missionary in a foreign field. In October 1816, Moffay and five others sailed to Cape Town, South Africa, arriving January 1817. Moffay reached Africa's Africaners Corral in January 1818, where he was given a formal reception and settled down to a more primitive, simpler life. Moffay met his fiancée, Miss Mary Smith, at Cape Town. After their marriage, they returned to Namaco Land. His destination was Kuruman, where he would do his best work. About 100 miles south from Kuruman was Jira Town, where missionaries were doing missionary work with the Hottentots, Bushmen, and other tribes. This is also where their daughter, Mary Moffay, who would later be the wife of David Livingstone, was born. Finally, Robert and his family leave Giratown and take a long, tiresome journey to Kuruman. In the beginning, working with the Betuanas and Kuruman was very difficult. The doctor of the tribe would blame the bad weather of the, on the preaching of the missionary. Mofei was often in personal danger. At one time, he had bewitched the rain again. A group of natives surrounded him and threatened him with spears so that he would leave the country. Ten years later, in 1829, Moffay writes home, The simple gospel has melted their flinty hearts, because the entire tribe of the Betuana had been accepted into Christianity. The Betuana said themselves to the missionary, You found us beasts and made us man. In the same years, he made trips to the Matabal tribe, but he had to return to Kuru Man, where he was much more needed. The Betuanas were willing to accept Christianity, but he now had to translate the Bible from English to their language. In 1835, he makes one last trip to the Matabal, but they were soon attacked by the Zulus, and Mofei loses contact with them. In 1839, Robert and his wife returned to England to stay for four years. During this time, he was translating the Bible to South Africans' native language and returns with 500 copies. Two years later, the Mofes followed and were made remained in Africa for 27 years until Robert's retirement. Towards the end of his service, he stayed working in Kuruman while his children traveled. In 1865, he was attacked by a native and got blows that endangered his life. In the years before then, in the next few, his oldest son Robert, his daughter Mary, and his son-in-law who married his daughter Anne had all died. Then in 1870, Mofei had to bid farewell to his worth in South Africa because of his own failing health. Of the final farewell, his son John writes, as the wagon drove away, it was followed by all who could walk and a long pitiful wail arose, enough to melt the hardest heart. Back home in London, Robert devoted his time to speaking at large gatherings. Many honor honors were bestowed upon him and Queen Victoria received him in special audience. In 1862, Mary Moffay died and in 1874, Livingstone was brought and buried in England. Moffay escorted the remains to London and attended the funeral. At last, wearied by his earthy pilgrimage, the great missionary died August 3, 1883, at the age of 88 years. London Times wrote of him, Moffay's name will be remembered as long as the South African church endures, and his example will remain with us as stimulus to others and as an abiding proof of what Christian missionaries can be and can do.